Welcome back to Dia Griffin Hobby. My name's Dave. And we're only about a week into January, but already I'm making some good progress in the train room. I've got shelves. I don't know how much they're gonna hold, but we're gonna find out together. I had to make some changes to the wall behind me. You might notice the door is not there anymore. Well, actually it is still there. I just took the hinges off and kind of screwed it into place because I didn't have any more paneling to fill the hole. It's good enough for a wall covered with shelves. I would have covered the entire wall with shelves, but I've got my stereo system here, the subwoofer down here, and that's access to my airlines for the compressor. So I needed to keep that space as it is. But still, I think this is a good amount of shelf space. I stopped the shelves at the height that they're at because that's as high as I can reach without getting on a step stool. And I just didn't want to be climbing up to get stuff. Uh, the top shelf is more of a display shelf. I can put some larger pieces on, uh, maybe some accessories or standard gauge stuff that I'm not going to be getting down to use, but still want to see. Like other projects, I wanted to come at this from a very budget-minded standpoint. I had gone to the hardware store and I was looking at one by fives by eight foot long, and they were over $10 a piece. That was just going to cost too much for what I wanted to do. And also, you really don't need that much depth to hold little gauge trains. So I wandered around the store looking at the different choices of lumber, and I came across one by four by eight foot uh, fairing strips. Now, they're not the best wood. I wouldn't use them in the house for any sort of anything, really, because <laughs> they're a little rough, they're a little twisted, they're a little, well, they're, they're, they're not straight, I'll tell you that. Uh, it took me quite a while going through the supply at the store to find 30 pieces that were not mangled. The um, number of the ones I got had little twists and bends, uh, but it's good enough for what I'm gonna be doing with it. And instead of 10 or 11 bucks a piece, it was below $4 a piece. So for the difference in cost, I think it's well worth it. They've turned out pretty good. And who's gonna be looking at the shelves themselves anyway? It's the trains that are interesting. I get a little impatient on a project like this. And one of my ideas had been to either with the table saw or router, cut grooves in each shelf to represent the tracks so that the trains would sit in those grooves and kind of keep them in place. Well, I kind of didn't have the patience for that. Besides, my table saw is not very good and my skills with a router, being that I don't have a router table, just a handheld router, it would have been more headache than it was worth. So I just assembled the shelves as is, without any modification made to hold the trains. Now, I do have a lot of old tubular track, uh, both in O and O27. So a lot of it's kind of at a point where I wouldn't use it on a layout, but I still have it. So maybe I'll clean some of that up and use it on the shelves. For the time being, I'm thinking, I'm gonna put stuff up there, see how it fits, see how it looks, and worry about track later. One cool thing I did do with the router was recess some lighting in that top shelf that overhangs. I don't know how much that lighting will do to facilitate viewing of the trains. It's more of just an accent thing I thought would be fun. And that was like a $14 strip of LED lights off of Amazon. So didn't cost much. The individual part that cost probably the most is that top shelf. Uh, it's a one by eight, I think. Uh, so it gives me a nice surface to put stuff on, but it was worth it because I was trying to do a top shelf with multiple pieces of wood and it just wasn't gonna work. So this, I think, you know, I splurged on one piece of wood. The rest of it was pretty cheap stuff. If you get close to the shelves, you'll see little imperfections in the wood, little gouges. I didn't take time to sand the pieces, so they're a little rough. Uh, they each had a smooth side, well, a smoother side and a rough side, but I couldn't necessarily 
go on that. I had to go how <laughs> the, the deformities of the piece fit the deformities of the wall. So I'm not concerned about how smooth it is. Really, it's a utility shelf. Um, it was something I just needed to get up so that I can get some trains off the layout and maybe make some progress under the layout and on the layout and the rest of the room, which needs some help too. Shelf number one. I think I'm gonna see if the blue comet looks good there. Of course, with all the cutting and working I've been doing in here, everything's got like a fine layer of sawdust on it. pretty cool. Yeah, I think it will look better with some track under it. Uh, it will sit a little straighter, a little more evenly, but for the time being, I'm pretty happy. Now we just have to decide what goes on the rest of the shelf. So since the blue comet looks so nice there, I figure the Southern Crescent's got to go above it. I've got extra cars for this set, so they're not all going to fit here, but at least most of them will fit and it will look pretty cool. With this set, I also have the K-Line box car that goes with it and the dining car, as well as an extra coach or two. But as long as I get most of it up there, I think that's gonna be good. Why didn't I do shelves before? This is so cool. As somebody who grew up mostly with freight trains, I, I always wanted a bunch of passenger trains and I think I've got some ones now that I just really enjoy running and looking at. So I'm gonna enjoy seeing them on the shelf. It's not officially a set or anything, but I got these cars to run with this MPC or a TCA Hudson. Now I have to say, I'm fairly uncomfortable having all these things on a shelf over a concrete floor, but I don't think there's any chance of this shelf coming down. It's all screwed together, glued together, reinforced, screwed to the wall. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> But still, I'll be uh, probably a little uncomfortable, but it looks awesome, so that'll make up for it. I might have said it already, but I'm pretty excited. This is too cool. Uh, the lights, I think, do a decent job, and the sets look pretty good up here. Granted, they're not all actual sets, but things I like to run together. Things might get moved around and changed and other things might show up on here. But for the moment, to see these trains on the shelf, I mean, not only does it free up other storage space and clear off some of the layout, but it just looks awesome. I'm already second guessing myself here. So I realize I don't have my post-war 2500 series cars up 
and I'm not sure how to best utilize these lower shelves. I put my standard gauge set up top. I have a couple of random standard gauge cars that will probably go up there. All right, the 2500s look pretty amazing up there with the 2243. That's just kind of iconic looking. Uh, it would be nice if I could fit the AB unit or an AA unit of the 2343s, but I like that. amount of stuff on these shelves. I'm pretty happy with the way it works out. I could probably use two or three times this space as what I've got here. Guess it would be neat if the stereo system wasn't here and I could use the whole wall, but I like the stereo. I mean, I know you can't see most of it at the moment because I've got it blocked off to seal up some drafts, but I don't want to move it. I got to do what I can with this space. So this works out pretty well. I got these sets up here, which is great. I've got some engines down here and a couple of random things. Uh, I got some pre-war cars here. I have a first aid kit uh, with the public service emblem on it. Uh, I've got some toy cars from arcade that were my grandfather's that he played with when he was a kid. And then my uncle painted when he was a kid. So it's cool having those. Uh, up top, I've got some standard gauge stuff and a cast iron car that we found in the installation in my parents' house when I was a kid and we were working on the, on the attic. I've got my first set from when I was a kid down here. A few engines. It's all gonna change as I'm using things. If I take down the Chicago and Alton to run it, I might put something else back up there. So I'm sure this will not stay like this. So I should really relax and not worry about if it's perfect or not, because it's gonna change. As I take one set down to use, I'll put something else back up. Or if I find something ends up being on the layout a lot, I might put something else on the shelf. But I am just psyched to have shelf space. It really frees up the storage under the layout. So it's going to give me some ability to work under the layout on this side, which I need to do, and should make it easier to run stuff if I can actually get to it. So not a bad project. Uh, I'm pretty psyched that it's the 7th of January and I already have a big project tackled that I wanted to get done this year. So that feels pretty good. Now I just have about 342 other projects to get done this month. So let's see how that goes. There's always something to be done, but little steps along the way, you get some projects done, others have to wait, but progress is progress and I'm happy with it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on DA Griffin Hobby.